Welcome to Weekend Star Warriors. Min Ban? I've never even heard of Min Ban. No one has. And it is steadily growling at the three of you. I growl right the f back. How do you wish to punctuate your entrance? <laughs> I am sufficiently intimidated. We take this moment and shoot the shit out of all of them. Yeah. I'm gonna go look at that pile over there. <laughs> pile! You wanna sleep on it? No, I wanna poke it. I sit down with you two for two seconds, and now I'm involved. I just want to point that out. Okay. I'll blow a motherfucker's head off now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yay, <laughs> me! Blow your bowcaster. I have issues. Circaporus 5 known locally as Mimban, the fifth in a system of 15 planets, perpetually damp world of swamps, caves, and ruins from a long extinct race. Two moons, 21 hour days, 334 day year, the sun can be seen almost three times a year. And there are enough mosquito-like insects to make even an entomologist hate bugs. Largely unexplored by even its 97% native population, the only modern cities are built around the five imperial mining colonies on the planet, though officially on the side of the Confederacy of Independent Systems during the Clone Wars, as decreed by Circaporus IV, the indigenous species of Mimban had no say in the matter, and their home was turned into a war zone. At the conclusion of the Clone Wars and Declaration of the Empire, the entire Circaporus system fell under imperial rule. Although Mimban is still technically under imperial rule, the Empire's presence there is negligible. A mere governorship to supervise the mining operations for dolomite, a heat-resistant metal used in starship engines and armor plating, rare minerals used in sensor equipment, and a form of swamp gas that can be used to generate energy, but smells like those farts you get after eating nothing but hard-boiled eggs for a week. Ew. <laughs> Jesus. The export of this material is nowhere near as high as those of other planets, so many Imperial resources are spent elsewhere. Ironically, though Mimban is in the Empire, this backwater world is the perfect place for someone to hide from their past and start a new life, be it mining, shopkeeping, or working at the local cantina. It is here, at this local lonely cantina, in the largest of the mining colonies, that we find ourselves. Three miners are crowded around one table, trying to take advantage of each other's dismal earnings in a game of sabak. Another five are seated in a corner laughing at some random joke while the waitress tries politely but firmly to cut off their conversation with her. A bartender wipes a glass with a filthy rag, making the glass steadily filthier. There is what could be a person or a pile of rags in the far corner. The sound of a sorrowful jizz tune permeates the atmosphere, played by the only non-human, a Shistovin musician, his hat on the ground before him for non-existent tips. All of a sudden, the bar doors burst open, and in comes a young lady, her nose buried in a data pad, followed closely by a two to three foot white teddy bear looking creature, known to any fan as an Ewok, but unknown to the patrons in the bar. How would you describe yourself? Oh, I, I am Liana Emerald. I am about 5'1". I have black hair, olive skin, red eyes, and adorable dimples. I am a ping pong. I'm an Ewok, and I am here gathering information, and I think that's all you need to know. Okay. <laughs> Liliana, perhaps you would care to explain how you got from where we left you on Camino to here. Oh, it was quite difficult. Um, <laughs> I had to board several different ships to get here, and the last one I didn't want to show my ID to them. So because I... Because it was the planet Kuat, which is very uh, Empire friendly. Yes, and I don't really want anyone knowing where I'm going. Especially so, your mother. Yes, my, my dear mother. <laughs> well, yes, I, I had to stow away on this ship, which uh, led me here. And since you parted ways from, from your friend McClaw over on Camino, that has been six months. Now, how did you meet this uh, small white furry creature? 
she was another stowaway and she had this little <laughs> den of supplies and <laughs> she just I, I was so interested in her I'd never seen one of her before so I had to introduce myself <laughs> that sounds about right <laughs> And we can now understand you, uh, Ping Pong, because you have a translator that Liliana gave you. So is that what you call this thing? Yes. Translator. I guess so. Okay. I was sitting on this giant ship. Yes, a ship. Mm -hmm. And um, I sort of just ended up there. I was following some other people, trying to gather some information, and then all of a sudden, here I am. Okay. And how did you convince her to? come with you off of the ship. It wasn't hard to do. <laughs> well, it's much more pleasant. <laughs> yes, it, it was quite hot on that ship and we wanted to get out of it as soon as possible. <laughs> we covered with fur, you see. Mm. Yes, it's quite hot down and there. And what planet do you think this is, Liliana? It's Naboo, right? We'll see. Mm. You've just entered the cantina. You have some options here of what you want to do. You can talk to the bartender, you can talk to the huh. drunk ruffians, you can try playing a game of sabac, or... Uh... What is the drinking age? Oh, they don't have one. You can get... <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, can... Um, I want to talk to the bartender. How can I help you, young lady? Can I have uh, one of your fun drinks? Fun? I suppose we have fun drinks. It uh, depends. You want something strong or timid? Oh, it would be my first drink, so I think... Timid it is. Okay, that'll be one credit. Oh, here you go. Oh. Yep, that's a credit. Oh. <laughs> you drink down the drink and you start to feel a little tipsy. Oh, I've never felt this way before. Um, it's kind of happy. <laughs> that thing down there, is that a pet or a person? Oh, I'm not a pet. <laughs> okay, would you care for a drink as well? Um, sure, but make mine a brave one. Um, are you sure? I mean, you... Yes. <laughs> okay, yes, I, I, here we go. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> She takes a sip. Now, roll for uh, uh -oh. willpower, I suppose, with disadvantage. Okay. Because you're so tiny. Well, nine. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Your speech is now slurred, and somehow the uh, somehow the translator picks up on this. <laughs> One time I was off for a mission. A mission? Going. I'm going to go look at that pile over there. Pile! <laughs> what pile did you just go the into? The pile of rags in the corner. You want to sleep on it? No, I want to poke it. Okay. <laughs> well, for poking. Pile! Pile! You poke it and it grunts. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> what else is in this bar? <laughs> Well, you could continue to talk to the bartender, ask uh, for directions, or you could play sabak with some of the others. You remember how to play sabak, right? Yes. We each need four d6s, <laughs> and whoever makes 23 first wins, hmm. basically. Okay. <laughs> so, you step on Hello. up to the guys and... Hello, gents! <laughs> Can we play your game? Uh, sure, I guess. Uh, we'll deal you in. They pass out the cards, or dice in this case. Now, opening bet is three credits. Okay. And I take it you're paying for both of you, Liliana? Yes. All right. <laughs> Do I have any money? No, you don't. <laughs> okay, cool. Unless you want to count your Ewok currency, which is so small carved stones. Just, mm -hmm. just re to remind me. Uh, is three credits per dice, or...? Three credits for the buy-in, and uh, one credit or more to raise the bet. Okay, okay, okay. Now, for those of you first listening, the idea of this game is to roll four dice, and you can push one into the interference field to keep from rolling it again, and the object is to be the first one to reach 23 with the least number of rolls. I am going to put my six and my five in the interference field, and I'm going to re do two bets per, mm -hmm. per dice. 
and then re roll my one and my three. Three. Oh, uh, 19, I think. Um, I'm gonna roll one more time. <laughs> All of them, or are you gonna? Just one. Okay, so you're placing a six, a, a six. five, and a six in interference field. And then I'm going to re roll this three. Hold on, everyone else gets a chance to roll now. Okay. Okay. Five plus four plus two plus two. Yep, thirteen. Thirteen. All right, they're going to roll again. One of the guys is going to raise the bet by two credits. Okay. I bet uh, a one one bet. <laughs> so two. So credits. two credits. Yes. Well, I suppose I fooled then. That was great fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I'm going to uh, bet two credits again. All right. Okay. <laughs> Two more credits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can do this. Oh my goodness! I think I went over. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you uh, uh, you've eight, lost all your credits. Eighteen I plus five. Wait, no. Oh wait, eighteen plus five. I I got I won. Twenty-three. Yes. Yes. <laughs> huh. Well done, little lady. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> You want to go again? Oh no, I think I, I, that's enough excitement for one day. <laughs> All right. Let's just say that you continue playing just for fun. You don't have to put any money in, but you can't win any money from them. Okay, that's fine. But while you're playing, you decide to have a conversation with them. What would you like to ask them about? Oh, um, can I ask you directions for Theed? Hmm. Never heard of that town. What's Theed? It's, um, uh, essentially a palace. <laughs> you think this place has palaces? I mean, maybe a couple temples here and there that are old ruins, but closest thing to a palace is probably the sergeant's quarters, and that place is hardly a palace. Oh. You seem confused, little lady. Uh, what planet do you think you're on? I thought this was Naboo. <laughs> Oh, how'd you manage that? This is Circaporus V, known more commonly as Mimban. Mimban? I've never even heard of Mimban. No one has. Ah, uh, well, you're fresh out of luck. I don't think that uh, there are many shuttles going uh, anywhere near Naboo from here. You might as well uh, just enjoy your time here, take in some of the sights, and... Uh... What are the sights? Well, mud, <laughs> trees... I like, mud. I like trees. And giant bugs we call mimskitos that are about the size of your head. Do you have any? Uh, no, that's not any, very pleasant. <laughs> do you have any uh, like anything to cover yourself Protect with from those, from those giant giant mosquitoes? Blood eating mosquitoes. You got a blaster? Uh, I yes. Got a stone knife. Hmm. <laughs> that might work. Blaster is usually the go-to. Although if you can find yourself a stun baton or stun something. That'll work really well. A stun baton. What about a shock glove? <laughs> That'd work. As you're having this conversation, you notice a painfully skinny green alien with large orange eyes wearing nothing but a loincloth, timidly walking around, trying its best to be inoffensive. It busses tables and frantically eats the contents clean before placing the trays on a conveyor belt. Depending on who you ask, they will give a different opinion of this. What is that thing? <laughs> oh, we call them greenies. They're kind of, uh, they're the native inhabitants of this planet. They just, they have no spine. All they want is to uh, find food and stuff, so we throw them a couple things every now and then. They, they really don't hurt anyone. Can I offer some food? Because they have the money. Sure, of course. Um, what, what kind of things do these green things like to eat? Anything. They actually prefer that, uh, that swill you got there, little lady. Mm -hmm. Your drink. My drink? Oh, I'll just have another drink then. Okay. And you can give it to that greeny. Before you can order, though, the Mimbonite is called over by the three drunks in the corner. Hey there, greeny, you want a drink? I'll dance for it. Whoa, no, I'm just ordering him a drink. He doesn't have to dance. They don't listen to you. The Mimbanite dances. Yo, pipe man, cut that sad shit and play our boy here something a little more exciting. <sighs> this again. What do you do? I roll my eyes and keep playing when I'm playing. Hmm. The drunks 
are laughing hysterically at the poor Mimbanite. One of them offers him a beer, and then suddenly spills it. Oops, clumsy me. Well, you wanted beer? There you go. The Mimbanite kneels and gives thanks and praise to the drunk, and starts lapping up the beer. There's some on my boots, too. Don't forget that. The Mimbanite complies. After laughing a bit more, the drunk kicks the Kawei in the face. Look at that! You got blood on my boots! Now what are you gonna do? The Mimbanite is frightened, but tears a strip of its own loincloth and starts polishing the boots. I'm gonna stop playing. It's like, alright dude, that's enough. Just ugh, chill out, okay? And then go back to my play. Uh, while he's cleaning the boot, I'm gonna run over to the Mimbanite and say, Hello! Um, I was just wondering if you could help me over here, and then I pull him away, but as I do, I make sure to step on the boot. <laughs> my dirty... Oh, I'm so sorry! My mistake! Goodbye! Roll for step on boot. <laughs> Not like hard, but just so that I can get it dirty again. One. Oh, no. He barely feels it. I'm not doing it to hurt him, I'm doing it to get his boot dirty. So I fart as I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> the music stops because I'm laughing too hard, so keep playing. <laughs> You little bitch. Oh, dear. Oh, it was an accident. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we all have gas. <laughs> he stands up clumsily, holds up his fist, and suddenly a huge blade comes out of the fist, <laughs> up the sleeve, and splits into two blades, one going to the left and one going to the right. Oh, really? I Are you going pull, to pull out my blaster and I'm like, oh, you're going to hurt my friend with that? Is this really? fighting over. I was helping out a friend and I accidentally hit your boot. And you're going to what? Cut a woman up in a bar because of that? That's a woman? I'm a woman, goddammit! <laughs> Roll for intimidation, both of you. <laughs> 20. Natural 20! Woo! First to the night! <laughs> he is surprisingly afraid of this tiny white teddy bear. <laughs> As he should. He holds up his arm and chink, chink, the blade folds back into his sleeve. Well, you enjoy Come on, your guys. beer then. <laughs> Come on, guys. This ain't worth it. <laughs> the three drunks well, leave. I go back to play. <laughs> okay, so you. Uh, I didn't even think that would work. <laughs> <laughs> you had a whole encounter plan for it, didn't you? Oh, no. Don't worry, I've got plenty of other stuff. <laughs> Yeah, After the little con <laughs> confrontation, you notice that the pile of rags is staring at you. She seems to be an old woman with very bright eyes, and she smiles. Sorry for poking you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's quite all right, dearie. I, I found it quite fun seeing you finally stick it to those little bastards. <laughs> uh, could you please come over here? Um, how about I buy you a drink for your bravery, the two of you? Oh, sure! That's lovely! <laughs> Will you also buy my little green friend a drink? Ah, it's so nice to see young people with such manners to the less fortunate. And she does. Thank you! Uh, would he prefer a strong or a weak one? I don't know. What do you want? What do you little want? guy. Little uh, slimy little dude. What okay. does he want? Uh, beer. <laughs> Can I take a beer, please? Sounds whatever he, whatever the gentleman prefers. Okay, yes. you pay for the beers, and uh, he hops off happily drinking mm -hmm. while you two sit down next to the little rag lady. I must say, your presence is staggering, especially you, young lady. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just a young lady. I don't know what it wasn't just the, the blaster that you... you Tiny, what exactly are you? Ewok. An Ewok? I've never heard of these things. Are they, uh... She glances around nervously. Are they generally force-sensitive? I don't know, are they? No. <laughs> but you don't know if they are or not. I don't know what you're talking about. Now tell me, you wouldn't happen to know anything about Jedi, would you? No, not at all. The music stops for just a second, but then it keeps going. 
I think the musicians listen. Uh, that's all right. He's harmless. He's been here for weeks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since the beginning of recorded history, the Jedi were the guardians of peace and justice. Yes, the propaganda may say that the Jedi were a failing order, wiped out for the danger they posed to the galaxy, but don't you believe a word of it, children? Officially, they say we started the Clone Wars as a plot to increase our power. Amazing how the best lies have a grain of truth. They might be able to rise again with the help of you youngins. Who's this, the Jedi? Who? What? What are you talking about? Yes, I know it's hard to believe, but I myself was once a Jedi Master. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> now, Zizix, the musician, is getting a little irritated by this. The music abruptly stops again. It's like, what do you mean you've never... I mean, I'm just playing music for now. Not... Alright, why don't you just tell us what you're thinking about then? Alright, and I walk over and sit down next to you guys. So, um, I'm Zizix Macht. I'm a Schistaven, which for those who don't know, I, I look like Wolfman but just all the time. So I'm a werewolf, but all the time. It's awesome. So I sit down and I'm like, you you were in the middle of a story about the Jedi. Are you a Jedi? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. No. <clears throat> Are you sure? Man, yeah, I'm really sure. Oh, Maybe he failed the test or something. I can hear you. you what? Know. You're not being, you think you're What? Being, <laughs> you think you're being quieter than you are. Now the be here, please, Rocky. There, yeah. Strong one. Strong one. Okay. <laughs> Got it, little lady. <laughs> See, yeah, here's the thing. I think you think you sound like this, but really you sound like this. Oh, why are you yelling at me? Because I'm trying to... Sh Never mind. I want to yell, too. Queenie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. It was one of the... That's the way? Yes, I was a Jedi Master, but I wasn't a very good one. Unfortunately, I was no match against the combined might of the Imperial military. But now, I might have a chance with you two. Um, the two? The mil military? Oh, I'm not saying we're going to go and lead an entire charge against them, but there is a little bit of good that we can do. Because that is the essence of the Jedi Knight. People need help. They find those people and help them. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Zizix? Absolutely. Mm. They were the best of the galaxy, and they were eradicated. Oh, that's not very good. Mm. There is a way you can help me. Alone we can't do much, but in my travels I have come across a tiny little ingot that can change this dark tide that has enveloped the galaxy. Feast your eyes. She pulls out a small glass vial. Inside is a faintly glowing red shard of crystal, only one inch long, and a millimeter wide. She pours it out onto the table. Go ahead, touch it, all of you. Is that safe? I want to point out that the two ladies here just reached out and touched it, no preamble whatsoever. <laughs> okay, make uh, a d20 roll. See, this is why you ask. <laughs> I want to know. 19. 19. With a 19, you suddenly feel everything. You can sense the desperation of the little greenie, the ambition of the old lady. It seems like you can tell exactly what everyone is thinking. Neat. Wow. Just, and, just from touch, but when I'm, only when I'm touching it. Yes. As soon as you take your finger away, it all vanishes. Whoa, you two went somewhere just now. What happened? I'm pretty sure you've touched this stone before. Would I have? No, you can yeah. make a touch on it if you want. Well, no, I'm asking them first because I don't... Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You should try it. Kind of, it's, it's really neat. <laughs> you seem to know about this stuff already. I feel like this wouldn't be oh. that much of a surprise. My knowledge of Jedi and the Force and whatever else she's been talking about starts and ends with, there were Jedi, they were cool, now they're gone. You know, there might be a bit of force potential in you, what? young man. Why don't you give it a try? Touch it, touch okay, okay, touch okay. It, touch it. And I reach out and touch it. Roll a d20. Twelve. Okay. You touch it, mm -hmm. and you don't feel anything quite yet. 
but a tiny arc of electricity shoots out of your finger. Oh. Like a static shock. Neat. And that's new, right? That's... I would not have... That has never happened to you before. Oh. Huh. That's an interesting reaction. What? Can I, can I touch it again? Go ahead. Okay. For another roll. That's another 12. Okay, same thing happens. Hmm. A repeatable outcome. That's... I don't know exactly what that means, but clearly you have a tiny bit of force potential. It might be useful in the little venture I have planned. What? what? What's this venture? What do you have planned? Well, she breaks off, suddenly staring at the door. Oh, dear. The drunks come back in. <sighs> oh, Lord. These guys again. With two extra buddies. Oh, oh God. Oh, Good. goodness. Oh, Lovely. The great. three guys at the sabak table get up and quickly leave. <laughs> the bartender scrunches behind the bar. The greenie rushes out. Should we take this outside so it's not going to mess up the bar? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. What? <laughs> you in? What? No, you, no. You, Why? You I, guys I don't... Just run right ahead out there and we'll be right behind you. Right behind you. Yeah. Ya. yeah. <laughs> come on then, we'll let's meet, go. We'll, we'll meet you out there. You turn to the pile of rags and it is now just a pile of rags. What? The what? woman has vanished. Look, where is the stone? It is still on the table. Oh, oh I'm grabbing it. Okay, and are you going to put it in the vial, or are you going to stay seeing Basin. everything for the rest? <laughs> I'm going to put it in the vial. <laughs> okay, you put it in the vial. The thugs march outside. <laughs> and as they do, I lock the door behind them. <laughs> it's, it's not that kind of a door. It's Dang. one of those bar swinging doors. Okay. We get something to... Would the saxophone be... <laughs> no. <laughs> you are not uh, weaponizing my instrument. No, no, I'm trying you? to block the door. You with, can't. Again, you are not weaponizing exit? my no. instrument. <laughs> is there another exit? Uh, no, there isn't. <laughs> there's not a window or something. That is on not side. up to there fire There are windows code. on the same side as the door. Oh. Definitely not up to fire You code. are going to have to go out there and face them. <sighs> Very well. <sighs> I sit down with you two for two seconds. And now I'm involved. I just want to point that out. Okay. <laughs> What's the plan here? What are you doing? I am very skilled, okay? I can defeat those guys with the two shots. I guess I'm going to try. You're taking too long. One of them comes back in, points his <laughs> blaster at you. I, 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 coming. That's a two. <laughs> it Does it hit? No. He fires over your head, and it almost hits you. I immediately... I shoot, shoot him back. Okay. While she's doing that, can I overturn a table and, you know, yes. like action action movie style? It's probably not going to do anything against a blaster, a wood table. But I turn it over and hide behind it anyway. I got a crit. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... <laughs> oh. Two damage. <laughs> she rolled a one on a crit for two. <laughs> Yay, high five. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I think that happened on my first crit, too. Only two of them have blasters. The leader is stepping in with both of his wrist blades extended, each one going two feet out. Wannabe. I knew this guy was coming back. <laughs> and he has an interesting hairstyle. Uh, he has kind of mutton chops and pointy, pointy side hairs like horns. <laughs> Roll for initiative now. Oh god. That's Roll a d20, a d20 right? right? Okay, what did everyone get? 18. 21. 21? Seven. Okay, Liliana is first. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. And then one of the guys with guns. <laughs> Actually, no. Knife guy. For those of you listening, the dice I am rolling is black with red numbering. So it's like my appearance, black hair and red eyes, so that's... Also kind of sithy, a little bit. Okay, so we got uh, eight, no. 19, 18, what did you get? 18. 18, so uh, the nice. people who are attacking you are two guys with guns, one guy with wrist knives, one guy with a chain, and one guy with a shovel. Who would you like to aim at first? One of the guys with a blaster. Okay, go ahead and roll for an I attack. I did already. Uh, I hit three. Three, okay. Yep, that hits him. Go ahead and roll for damage. Five. You hit him in the chest. 
it burns, and he glares at you. Now it is the main guy with the knife wrists. He's going to charge right at you, Liliana. He rolled a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all that armory, and you, <laughs> that's how you come at me. <laughs> now let's roll for damage against himself. <laughs> <laughs> he trips and falls on his own wrist blade, stabbing him through the throat. Yes. Oh, no! And he is now bleeding out all over the floor. Oh, my. This was very bad, very quick. This encounter did not go how you thought it would. <laughs> Dead. Oh, I, my God. He critted on him. I don't even know this man. <laughs> so who, whose turn is it now? Well, uh, <laughs> it's the guy with the chains turn. Now, let's roll for the rest of them to see if they want to continue fighting. <laughs> Only one of them wants to continue fighting. The rest are just staring at them. Really, dude? Your friend who started this fight is bleeding out and you're going to waste your time fighting us? Take your friend to the hospital and get out of here! Why are you even fighting us? I don't know you! I stepped on his shoe! I might have farted in his general direction! Is that a crime? There with it. There it Make is. a... Make a d20 persuasion check. <laughs> Do I get to add anything? Cunning? Cunning. 12. All of them, except for the one with the blaster, start running, screaming for medics. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> well, you're not going to take care of your friend. You're going to fight her. He is going to fire at you, Ping, because he's angry. I don't understand why you're so angry. <laughs> and Here two. We go. He rolls a two that hits. Oh dear. How do I know that? Because your defense is ranged one. Okay. <laughs> For four okay. damage. So your strain nice. goes down. Actually, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go down. Let's say uh, your agility plus your range. So it misses. You dodge out of the way. Great. <laughs> Next up, it is Zizik's turn. All right, well, I'm going to, because that guy still has his blaster pointed at her, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be like, really, dude? <laughs> Roll my eyes and pull out my sonic rifle, aiming at him. Okay, and that was concealed within your uh, your saxophone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason I didn't want you to freaking take it. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and roll for your attack. <laughs> I rolled a natural one! Your gun jams. Ah! How long does that take to clear? At least a round, right? Yeah. Damn it. Okay. Okay, Liliana. My turn again? Mm hmm. Oh, shoot at that stupid piece of crap. Four. Okay. And I crit on a four. <laughs> All right. Roll for damage. Right. Another one for two times. <laughs> All right. You shoot him, it hits him in the shoulder. Damn. Hold on, I have. You're convincing the other three to run away was the turn. All right. <laughs> All right. But now it is your turn. You have a little short bow you can use, or you can rush him with your pair of knives. Um, Stone knife and combat knife. I'm going to shoot at him with my bow. Go ahead and roll a d6. The d6. So I'll roll a six. Oh, that is a crit. And roll for damage. Same one. Two damage. Okay. Take Ooh. that. So that's four damage double, total. So it's four. Four damage. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> you been better. Okay, let's see if it hits him anywhere. Okay, it it hits him right in the eye. <laughs> Take that one. Natural 20. <laughs> that is for your lack of foresight. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, that pun translates. <laughs> now I'm going to roll for... Pain constitution for him. Zizek's mimes putting the gun to his head and pulling it, but doesn't actually do it. Just <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, That's with his freaking. <laughs> no, there you go. He drops his gun, screaming, <laughs> as you do, would. Mm. And suddenly, the doors burst open, and let's say ten stormtroopers come in. <sighs> Everybody, get on the ground. Oh, for right, right. They started it. Z Zizix makes sure his rifle is concealed again. And he complies. It's too late. They're uh, already. They all see right. it. I put it down. I uh, put my hands up. They lock you all in binders, oh, take gosh. away your weapons. Uh, 
Upon being searched, the troopers confiscate all your weapons and the crystal. <gasps> no! What? We need this. No! You are then escorted to Captain Supervisor Gremmel at his office. He is a uh, not quite fat person, but thick. <laughs> like a lineman, but a little healthier. Ooh, he's thick. Thick with a double C. Thick! <laughs> Mm. Not here for a month, and you're already causing trouble, eh, fur face? You wouldn't even believe me if I told you it wasn't my fault, so whatever. And what's this thing, your pet? I'm not a pet, but yeah. I do like a good pet once in a while. <laughs> it talks. Oh, thank you. Liliana <laughs> pats her on the head. <laughs> With my cuffs. <laughs> At least there's one civilized species here. Little human. Yes, what? God. What brings you to the Circapora system? I got lost, all right. <laughs> lost? She... I don't want to talk about it. She thought she was going to Naboo. <laughs> don't tell such disgusting lies. No, now, that's... why are you here? I told you I got lost. Why don't you believe the daughter of the governor of Carida? Oh, good. You're gonna. Do you know who I am? Him. That's gonna go well. <laughs> Seems to be what. <laughs> Wait, your, it is your governor Emerald's daughter? Yes. Oh, uh, Holy shit. my my apologies. Uh, I'm sorry. I will have to call your mother right away. I will have her. Oh no! 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 Don't call. Her. I'm sorry, you will have to stay in holding until we get... Really? What do you think her mother will think about that? Yeah. Keeping us in a cage? She's really do you not think she's going to like that? Doing that to her daughter? Well, you won't be in the same cage. You two furries will be in cell 94. Do you think, it, do you think it'll make her mother happy to put us in a worse cage than she's in? I know, we, we, we both love her mother just so much. Yes. She'd be devastated if De anything happened to us. I think she would us. be worse than devastated. She'd... She would be furious. Do you want to make her furious? Do you want to make Queen... Her mother will thank me for saving him from... Oh, uh, you don't know her, her mother very well. <laughs> <laughs> do you know her mother? Better yes. than you. <laughs> I can do whatever you want to do. You do at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> Help. <laughs> now, what is this thing here you got? Why oh, do you that, have a crystal? It's, um, I, I use it to clean my Star Wars saxophone. What? I don't know what a saxophone's called in this universe. <laughs> Miss Emerald, this was in your possession. What is this? It is something that brings me much joy. It is a, a family heirloom. It was my grandmother's, all right? Gremmel starts to say something, but then notices that the shard is glowing. He covers it with his hands, and it's still glowing. Soldiers, take them away. I, uh, I need to make a call. The soldiers escort you back to your cell and end up throwing you all in the same cell. Of course. That's and the, right! The soldiers say, You think he wanted us to put him in with the monster? Eh, who cares? <laughs> they don't pay us enough to care. You are stuck in this cell. It's very shadowy, very dark, very damp, very smelly, and... What do you want to do? You want to try picking the lock? Find a way out? Can I... Can I ask a DM question? Mm -hmm. Did they find the other thing? When they confiscated my sonic blaster, did they find the other thing? I have it pretty well hidden. Yes, they did find it. <laughs> I, so I, okay. Damn it. Never mind. Okay. They didn't turn it on, though. They don't know what it is. They don't know what it... Oh. Okay. It looks like a weirdly curved blaster, so they don't really know. Fair enough. Yeah, can I try to pick the lock? Unless someone else wants okay. to. Okay. Uh, go ahead well, and... Well, I was... They said there's a monster in here. I don't see anyone else. Well, really. there is someone in the shadows. A huge, hulking beast of a thing. And it is steadily growling at the three of you. I growl right the f back. <laughs> <laughs> Grab him by the neck and pick him up. All the Trandoshans are right outside. Yay! <laughs> they How far? Point blank. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, I need to stop using shit so much. Now, who do you want to designate for corpse duty? That was kind of enthralling. I'm sorry, I will have to call your mother right away. I will have her. Oh, no, 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 don't call I didn't even think that would work. I think you think you sound like this, but really you sound like this. Oh, why are you yelling at me? Because I'm... I want to yell too. <laughs> Pray. Pray. Hurrah. Just f***ing eat it, dick. Huzzah. He drops his gun and holds his hands up, surrendering. Too bad, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> All right. Ruthless. <laughs> Smash his f***ing face. I have issues. So I fart as I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my mouth! It's still oh. in my mouth! Oh, sorry! Oh, I'm sorry! I'm <laughs> All the Trandoshans are right outside. Yay! <laughs> they How far? Point blank. Yay! <laughs> I didn't even think that would work. Thanks for listening to Weekend Star Warriors. I am your host and game master, John Ike. Star Wars was created by George Lucas and is owned by Disney. This game follows the basic rules of the Edge of the Empire role-playing game, and rule books are available for sale wherever books are still sold. The setting for this adventure was based off of the book Splinter of the Mind's Eye by Kevin J. Anderson. I highly recommend reading his various works. Liliana Emerald was played by Megan Cordero. You can follow her on Instagram at meganda88. Zizix Mack was played by Jeffrey Gardner. You can follow him on Instagram at Jeffa Plus. Ping Pong was played by Kat Johnston. You can follow her on Instagram at BirdieCat82. McClaw was played by Edgar Cuevas. You can try to follow him, but do so at your own risk. Music by Megan Cordero. Effects by Jeffrey Gardner. Special thanks to Mike Christensen and Marisa Cuevas. Please like, subscribe, and review, and we will release the next episode in a couple of weeks. Thanks for listening, and remember... Don't run with scissors. It never ends well. <laughs>